This series is going to be your guide to the creatures of MetaZoo. Their original appearances, their backstories, and more will be explained in much more depth than what's printed on the cards themselves. MetaZoo is based around cryptids and other supernatural beings from around the world. Most of the creatures of MetaZoo are so obscure that you've likely never heard of them before. Cryptids such as the Bigfoot you're probably familiar with, but how much do you know about the Piazza Bird or the Roperite? So far, there's more MetaZoo beasties, as the brand refers to them, than there were Pokémon in the first generation. Pokémon had the Pokédex, a digital encyclopedia explaining each creature, to help new players understand the Pokémon that they would encounter. But is there such a thing as a Pokédex for MetaZoo? Well, of course there is. It's this series that you're watching right now. So without any further ado, let's take a look at the creatures of MetaZoo. The Loveland Frogman appears to be small in his MetaZoo illustration, but he actually stands at a whopping 1.2 meters, which is over 4 feet tall. He's based on a humanoid frog that several police officers had seen on the side of the road in Loveland, Ohio in 1972. There were actually a group of these Loveland frogs together at one point. Each of the eyewitnesses claim that their encounters with the frogmen ended after one of the frogs would hold up a stick and the shock of electricity would come out of the stick and the frogs would disappear. Because of this, many people believe that the Loveland frogmen actually had magical powers and that the stick that they carried was a magic wand. And this explains why the Loveland frogman in the MetaZoo card is dressed up like a wizard. There are several references in the Cryptid Nation card to giving the Loveland frogman a kiss. And this is simply a reference to the princess and the frog, which is entirely separate from the Loveland frogman itself, it's just a cute easter egg. The Wendigo is a fearsome creature, based around the legends of Native American cultures. Sometimes, the Wendigo is said to take the form of a human, with the skull of a deer. Other times, the Wendigo is said to have the face of a human, but the antlers of a deer. Wendigo are typically larger than a human man, standing at around 9 feet tall. According to the Native Americans, the Wendigo is an evil spirit that's able to shapeshift. Wendigos can possess humans and causes feelings of insatiable greed or hunger and the desire to eat other humans. As the Wendigo approaches, it brings about a cold chill in the air and a foul stench as well. Next up, we've got probably the most popular beastie of MetaZoo. The Mothman is a large, black humanoid with angel-like wings and glowing red eyes. He stands at over 9 feet tall. The Mothman was first spotted in 1966 in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, just before the collapse of the Silver Bridge, which ended the lives of many people. Many people believe that the Mothman is attracted to catastrophes. Just before the sightings of Mothman, a salesman in the same town had a frightful experience with another cryptid said to be directly connected to Mothman. This cryptid appeared to be a normal man, but he held a dark secret. As Woodrow Derenberger had been driving home down Interstate 77, he heard a crash. Then a strange hovering vehicle landed in front of his car. He was forced to stop, and a man walked out of the vehicle. He had a strange smile on his face that never went away. As he walked towards Woodrow's car, he told him to roll his window down telepathically. He told Woodrow that his name was Indrid Cold. He said that he meant no harm to him, but that he simply wanted to know more about the human race, and that he was apparently from another planet. Indrid Cold told Woodrow Derenberger that he was a searcher, but he didn't say what he was searching for. The fact that the Mothman had appeared so soon after Indrid Cold showed up leads to the conclusion that he was searching for the Mothman. In 1952, a group of boys had seen a bright object cross the night sky. Investigating what the object was, they came to a field where they encountered a 10-foot-tall humanoid with glowing eyes. This creature, now known as the Flatwoods Monster, ran towards the boys, extending its claws and hissing and giving out noxious gas that made them feel ill. This image is their actual depiction of what they had seen. Skeptics believe that the light that the boys saw was simply a meteor and the creature that they encountered was only a barn owl that was perched in a tree. The description for the Flatwoods monster on the Cryptid Nation card says that it was found perched in a tree despite its tremendous size. Gazing upon this alien beastie results in feeling ill. It came to our planet riding atop a meteor. What's funny about the description is that it incorporates all of the excuses that skeptics came up with into the existence of the Flatwoods monster itself. So according to MetaZoo, the Flatwoods monster was actually up in a tree, like an owl, and it was actually riding on a meteor. 
On the side of a cliff in Alton, Illinois, there was a depiction of a bird-like creature that was created by Native Americans. The original painting no longer exists because it had worn away, but the new painting was created that highly resembles the original. According to MetaZoo, the creature that's depicted on the cliff is also embedded into the cliff itself. The style of the Piazza bird is very distinctly different from what Native Americans usually draw, so it really asks the question, why does it look so different? And is it possible that the Native Americans actually saw a creature like this? The Boogeyman takes many different forms, but I've gotta say that the form on the MetaZoo card is probably my favorite. The Boogeyman said to hide in closets and under beds, and they snag up children that misbehave. Although versions of the Boogeyman exist across the world, the first written reports of it are from the Cherokee Nation. Sometimes misbehaved children that never encounter the Boogeyman in their childhood encounter him when they're adults. The Bat Squatch is a cryptid that closely resembles the Mothman, but has a far more rugged look to it. The Bat Squatch stands at about 9 feet tall, the same as the Mothman too, and reported by those who saw it to have blue fur, yellow eyes, sharp teeth, and tufted ears. It was first seen at Mount St. Helens in the 1980s, and again in 1994. The Dingbell is a tiny humanoid that's said to cause pain and mischief to humans. Also known as the Gremlin, these creatures were depicted on World War II propaganda posters as it was claimed that these Gremlins, or Dingbells, would sneak around and hurt you if you weren't careful. The Dingbells usually traveled in groups, and would purposely cause lots of mischief in the workplace to hurt people. The Dingbells are especially fond of wreaking havoc with electronic devices. Across the United States, there were many reports of people wearing bunny suits and wielding hatchets, threatening to hurt people. Although Wikipedia claims that the Bunny Man is only an urban legend, it is definitely a real thing. According to one article, a Bunny Man was seen in Fairfax, Virginia. He first smashed the window of a car and told the couple inside that they had been trespassing. Soon afterwards, a guard in a housing project under construction told police that he came upon a figure in a white bunny suit with floppy ears, chopping away with a hatchet at the porch post of an unfinished house. When the guard approached, the bunny man said to him, You're trespassing. If you come any closer, I'll chop off your head. The strange figure then turned and hippity-hopped off into the nearby woods. There's been many other reports too, even in other cities, of a man in a bunny suit walking around attacking private property and telling people that they're trespassing. The bunny man is most famous for hiding inside of a tunnel under a bridge, where he waits for his prey. Shadow people are eerie apparitions of darkness that people often see out of the corner of their eye or in the corner of their room. These strange dark figures are often seen wearing different types of hats for some reason too. The shadow people were first talked about in depth on the radio talk show Coast to Coast AM. Shadowy creatures have long been a staple of folklore and ghost stories though. One of the most prominent people who claims to have seen shadow people is Heidi Hollis. She describes shadow people as dark silhouettes with human shapes and profiles that flicker in and out of the peripheral vision. Other people claim that shadow people will jump on their chest and try to choke them. Shadow people emit a negative energy, so whenever they're around, you can sense their presence and their evil. The most prominent shadow person is known as Hatman. He shares all the same traits as a regular shadow person, but with a very distinctive, wide-brimmed hat. What appears to be the brim of a hat is probably horns, though. Going to something less scary, the Squonk is a creature which is so ugly that he goes around crying because nobody wants to look at him. Found in Pennsylvania, USA, this sad creature leaves a trail of tears behind him, which enables hunters to track him down. Few people outside of Pennsylvania have ever seen the Squonk. The Squonk is said to be one of the ugliest cryptids in existence. There's not just one squonk, there's many squonks, but they're so self-conscious that they hide, and so nobody can ever find them. The agropelter appears to be a monkey that hides in the tree, with the biggest difference being that this monkey has extremely long arms and an even larger stick that he'll whack anyone with that gets too close to his tree. The agropelter is said to have perfect aim, so if he sees you, it's too late. The agropelter is so savage that he eats owls and woodpeckers, but not the people that he whacks for some reason. 
The first sightings of Bigfoot are said to have occurred in 1958, but in fact, they were actually seen by Native Americans too. The Bigfoot is a creature that somewhat resembles a gorilla, but it stands completely upright and walks like a human. Like the Mothman and the Bat Squatch, the Bigfoot stands at around 9 feet tall. They're said to be relatively peaceful, hiding away from humans to maintain a quiet life in the woods. This handsome creature is known as a Gumbaroo. Whatever you throw at the Gumbaroo just bounces directly off of him due to his elastic skin. The Gumbaroo has a voracious appetite, eating anything he sees. And no matter how much he eats, he's still hungry. Gumbaroos look like bears, but they have no hair, except for big eyebrows and a beard. They have sharp teeth though for eating. The Gumbaroo will search far and wide for food, stopping at no lengths to find his next meal. The only downside to the Gumbaroo is that he's extremely combustible, so if there's a forest fire, he's done for. The Joint Snake is an interesting cryptid, with the ability to break itself apart and then put itself back together. If this cryptid looks familiar, it's because he's on that join or die poster that Benjamin Franklin made, where each piece of the snake represents the 13 colonies. If somebody were to take a piece of the Joint Snake, the Joint Snake would find something else to put in that place. The Wapaloozy is an elusive creature that slightly resembles a squirrel. The Wapaloozy is said to be able to come back to life, even if it's turned into clothing. A lumberjack had attempted to make middens out of the fur of the Wapaloozy, but soon after he had put the middens on, they came back to life and turned back into a Wapaloozy, running off of his hands and away into the forest. The Crazy Critter of Bald Mountain is an interesting creature that was spotted by several eyewitnesses in Lewis County, Washington in 1974. The face of this creature partially resembles an insect, but it has feet that look like those of an octopus. This crazy critter was seen after what appeared to be a spaceship crash landed in the mountains. Upon investigating the scene of the crash, the eyewitnesses encountered large quadrupedal creatures which glowed a bright neon green. Some people claim that they've still seen green glowing lights on the mountain to this day. The Hopkinsville Goblin, as well as the Hopkinsville Goblin King, are based on creatures that farmers had seen between the towns of Kelly and Hopkinsville in Kentucky in 1955. One important thing to note is that the MetaZoo card says that it was seen in 1970 in Fairfax County, Virginia. I'm not sure where they got that from, but it doesn't seem to line up with where the Hopkinsville goblins were actually seen. I just want to make a note of that. The Pokemon Sableye is actually based on the Hopkinsville goblin too. A total of 12 people who lived on a farm reported that their farm was being attacked by over a dozen small goblin-like creatures. They had attempted to hold them off for almost four hours, but nothing they did got them to leave. The police went with them to the farmhouse, but saw nothing there. The family abandoned the house after the goblins came back at about 3.30 that night. The Jersey Devil was seen in Leeds Point, New Jersey in 1735. Many claim that's the child of a woman who was a witch. The creature is said to live in the forest of Pine Barrens, but he often travels to the city to pester people. Eyewitnesses report that the Jersey Devil runs around with a high-pitched scream. The Quetzalcoatlus is said to be a predecessor of the Thunderbird. He's based on the dinosaur, also known as the Quetzalcoatlus, which is very similar to the Pterodactyl. The cryptid Quetzalcoatlus is able to control the power of the wind and thunder. There's been many recent sightings, too, of the Quetzalcoatlus flying about in the air. The design of the Quetzalcoatlus in Metazoo is much more similar to the Pterodactyl because of the notch on the back of its head. The Quetzalcoatlus has a wingspan of up to 36 feet, making it much larger than any birds that exist nowadays. Although the Metazoo card refers to the Quetzalcoatlus as a beastie bird, it's more appropriately a beastie reptile. The Hidebehind is a nocturnal creature from American folklore that preys upon humans that wander in the woods. They're often blamed for the disappearance of early loggers when they fail to return to camp. The hide behind conceals itself behind trees, contorting the shape of its body to perfectly match the shape of the tree. The hide behind stalks lumberjacks and other travelers through the forest. It'll follow you through the woods, and you'll feel that there's something there, 
but you won't be able to see it until it's too late. An interesting thing about the hide behind is that it hates alcohol, so if you were to keep alcohol on you, the hide behind will not attack you. The Kinderhook Blob was reported in 1962 in Kinderhook, New York, by a 10 year old boy. The boy had been playing with his cousin in the woods behind his house, and they both heard a high pitched whistle. They looked up and saw a white object peering at them from behind a pine tree. Just two years later, two men walking in the forest saw a very similar creature. The blob was seen for a third time by two 14-year-old boys while they were camping. Although the Kinderhook blob looks like it's small, it's actually two meters tall, which is about six feet tall. Skeptics claim that the Kinderhook blob is just an optical illusion, but how many pure white, six-foot-tall things are hiding behind trees in the forest? Although the MetaZoo card calls the Kinderhook blob an alien, it's also speculated that it could be a ghost as well. The Tuttle Bottoms Monster is a legendary creature said to inhabit a swampy area north of Harrisburg, Illinois, on the Saline River watershed. It's usually described as an ape-like and hairy creature with a long snout similar to an anteater. Over the span of 28 years, the Illinois Daily Register received over 50 reports of the creature. Some of the people who claim to have seen the creature believe that it was an experiment released by the government. Sometimes it walks on four legs, but most often it walks on two legs, like a person. This creature has actually walked directly up to eyewitnesses before too, showing that it's not afraid of people at all. At one point, the US Department of Agriculture actually conducted a private investigation into the creature too. The Cactus Cat lives in the Great Cactus Districts and is particularly abundant between Prescott and Tucson. It's been seen in Mexico as well. The Cactus Cat looks like a cactus. He has thorny hair, thorny ears, a branched tail, and barbs sticking out from his feet. He slashes cactuses apart, drinking the syrup out of them. The Cactus Cat is said to enjoy waiting until the cactus juice is fermented so that he can get drunk off of it. The Roperite is said to live in the foothills of the Sierra Mountains. No one knows where the creature comes from. The Roperite chases prey, and ensnares them with his beak. He's faster than any other creature, so there's no way to outrun him. As the Roperite runs, the rattle on his tail makes a whizzing sound, which disorients his prey. Some people believe that the Roperites are the spirits of early Spanish ranchers. The Matlocks is a Bigfoot-like giant described in legends in Western Canada. The Matlocks is described as being covered in stiff black hair. Other reports state that the Matlocks is very human-like and stands anywhere from 7 feet to over 30 feet tall. This cryptid is known to prey on humans and eat as many as they can for fun. The Tripadero is a cryptid with two telescopic legs and a tail like a kangaroo's. These features enable it to either become taller or make itself shorter. As the Tripadero travels through the bush-covered country, it elongates its legs from time to time, thus shoving itself up into the brush for the purposes of observation. The Tripadero chews up dirt in its mouth and spits it out at prey to attack them. At first glance, the lava bear appears to be based on an actual lava bear, but in fact, it's based on a species of black bear that was found in lava beds of South Central Oregon. The lava bears are described as being very small bears with woolly light brown fur. These bears were very small, only slightly larger than a badger. It's claimed by scientists that the lava bears were so small due to the harsh environment in which they lived. In the swamp region near Lake Okeechobee in Florida, Woodmen tell of a strange and dangerous creature known as the Snulligoster. At the end of its tail, there is a set of bony plates which resemble a propeller. These revolve at a terrifying rate, driving the animal like a torpedo boat through the mud. The Snulligoster has an insatiable appetite, and the only thing that can cure its hunger is the flesh of humans. And so anyone who finds themselves hunting for frogs and crawdads in the swamp had better watch out. The Gigi bird is a very strange bird reported to live in North America. It was described by the soldiers of World War II, who were positioned in Alaska. Although it could never be seen, the bird could be heard making a strange noise as it flew by. It made the sound, 
Gee, gee, geez, it's cold. The Funeral Mountain Terror Shot is a cryptid that has a casket-like body, six to eight feet long, with a shell running the whole length of its back. Its legs are long and wobbly, causing the terror shot to sway uncertainly from side to side and forward to back as it travels along. This cryptid was first reported by some Mormon emigrants who observed a peculiar procession entering the desert from a certain mountain range, afterward named the Funeral Mountains. One of the Mormons, aroused by his curiosity, made an investigation which resulted in finding out about all that's known about the terror shot. It seems that the animal lives in the little meadows and parks in the higher portions of the range, where it gradually increases in numbers, until by a strange impulse it's seized by a desire to emigrate, then they form long processions and march down into the desert, with the evident intention of crossing to other ranges that can be seen in the distance. As they encounter the hot sands, they rapidly distem with the heat, and one after another, they blow up with resounding reports, leaving deep, grave-shaped holes in the sand. The Luferlang is a creature from North American folklore. Although it partially appears to be a wolf, it's actually a horse, with large fangs and a spider's body. Sometimes the Luferlang has more of a horse-like body, but with six or more legs. The Luferlang is known to go around biting things, injecting venom into their blood, and eventually eating them. The Snowwasset is a cryptid of the Boreal Zone. It's a migratory cryptid, wintering in the lumbering regions between the Great Lakes and the Hudson Bay, and spending its summers far north in Labrador and the Barren Grounds. Unlike most wild creatures of the north, the Wasset is said to hibernate during only the warmest weather. During the summer, it has rudimentary legs, which enable it to creep slowly around and remain in the shade. After the first snowstorm, the Wasset loses its legs, though, the Wasset is a violent creature, with a ravenous appetite. It'll attack creatures even larger than itself. The Snow Wasset will even attack people if it has to. The Kalupalik is a cryptid from Inuit folklore. Much like the Boogeyman, it's said to pursue children who misbehave. The Inuit legend also has a practical purpose in keeping children away from thin ice or bodies of water, as this is where the Kalupalik is said to live. If children are found on the edge of the ice, the Kalupalik will snag them up. The Amacuck is a cryptid of the Yupik legend from the Bering Strait in Alaska. The Amacuck is a shapeshifter able to take many forms, and it behaves differently depending on where the person encounters them. If the Amacuck is at the sea, it's reported to be hairless with four arms. Its skin is leathery, and it attacks hunters in their kayaks, dragging them under the water to be eaten. The Amacuck is said to be able to burrow through the earth as quickly as they can swim through the water, and therefore it can pursue people onto land. When the Amacuck digs through dirt, it can dig around in a circle, creating a pitfall. The Amacuck is also able to jump through people, which causes their souls to leave their bodies. This cryptid is also able to turn itself into a human. According to Yupik legend, if a person encounters an Amacuck in human form, they should sit down with their back to the creature and not speak to it. The Amacuck is then said to offer gifts of increasing value. The legends state that a person should be silent until the Amacuck has offered the person everything they need, or at least everything that's on their mind. The Amacuck is also said to be able to multiply itself into eight different beings. The Menehune are a mythological race of dwarf people who are said to live in the deep forests and hidden valleys of the Hawaiian Islands, far away from human settlements. They build temples, fish ponds, roads, canoes, and houses. Some of the structures that Hawaiian folklore attributed to the Menehune still exist. These creatures are said to have lived in Hawaii before the settlers arrived there from Polynesia many centuries ago. Their favorite food's the banana, and they also like fish. Legend says that the Menehune will only appear at night, but no one except those who are chosen can see the Menehune. In the mountains of Colorado, there is a creature called the Rock Slide Bolter. Its entire body is composed of stones, and its tail consists of a divided flipper with enormous grab hooks, which it fastens over the crest of the mountain or ridge, often remaining there motionless for days at a time, watching the gulch for Taurus or any other hapless creature that might enter it. And when the Rock Slider sees a tourist, it'll slide down the mountain towards the tourist and eat them up. The Awful is a griffin-like cryptid with a 20-foot wingspan. 
It has a very large, serpentine tail, and enormous claws. It was reportedly sighted in Richmond and Berkshire, Vermont by several eyewitnesses. One sighting involved two sawmill workers who were crossing a bridge. When they saw the beast glaring menacingly down at them from a rooftop, one of the men was so frightened that he immediately had a heart attack. At one time, the author H.P. Lovecraft traveled to Richmond and Berkshire to search for the awful. The Bildad is a cryptid that's only ever seen in the Boundary Pond in Hurricane Township, Maine. It's about the size of a beaver, but it has long, kangaroo-like hind legs, short front legs, webbed feet, and a heavy hawk-like bill. It waits for a fish to jump out of the pond, and it uses its large tail to stun the fish, and then it takes it back to its nest. The Bildad is able to jump about 60 yards. It's claimed that if a human eats one of these creatures, they're forced to jump involuntarily. The Cumberland Dragon, also known as the Goosefoot, is a type of drake that was spotted in the Appalachian Mountains in 1794. The reports claim that it was squat like a frog, but very large and powerful, with a serpent-like tongue. This cryptid is a guardian of the wilderness. The original reports of this creature stated that it had two legs and no wings, but that it was very large. The technical terminology for this cryptid is that it's an acidic mountain drake. The Cumberland Spaceman, also known as the Solway Firth Spaceman, is a figure that was seen in a photograph taken on May 23, 1964, of a man's daughter who was sitting in a flower field. In the background of the Cumberland Spaceman card, you can actually see the little girl in her green dress. On October 7, 2007, in Oconto Falls, Wisconsin, there had been reports of a white dragon flying around in the night sky. Smaller dragons were also seen, along with several fireballs. One witness said, it looked like it was as large as a cow, with a snake-shaped head and a long, pointed tail. In the moonlight, the Oconto Falls dragon appeared to shimmer with a rainbow-like sheen. The Golden Bear is a massive bear seen by the Shawnee back in 1830. Legends of the Golden Bear go back even further, though. Aside from its golden fur, it's roughly the same as a regular grizzly bear. The Golden Bear was sighted in Turner, Kansas, but it was never caught. Many people believe that the Golden Bear is actually a spirit, rather than being a physical creature. The Hugag is a cryptid found across the northern United States and in Canada. It resembles a moose, but its legs are completely jointless. Its long lips prevents it from eating normally, too. Most of its body is hairless, so it uses a cloak of leaves to protect it. The last Hugag ever spotted is said to have been found near Turtle River in northern Minnesota, where one was found stuck in the mud. The Mad Gasser of Mattoon was the name given to the person responsible for a series of apparent gas attacks that occurred in Mattoon, Illinois during the mid-1940s. More than two dozen separate cases of gassings were reported to police over the span of two weeks, in addition to many more reported sightings of the suspected assailant. The gasser's supposed victims reported smelling strange odors in their homes, which were soon followed by symptoms such as paralysis of the legs, coughing, nausea, and vomiting. The Mishipeshu is an underwater panther, which is seen as a very important water spirit across many Native American tribes. The Anishinaabe are the most notable of the tribes that discuss the Mishipeshu. Sightings of the Mishipeshu range from the northeastern woodlands to the Great Lakes regions. The most sightings of the creature come from Lake Superior. The Mishipeshu is said to be able to turn itself into water. This creature is a mortal enemy of the Thunderbird, and if it senses one in the area, it will stop everything it's doing to attack it. In 1973, two men were fishing off a pier off the west coast of the Pascagoula River in Mississippi when they heard a whirring sound and saw flashing lights overhead. Then they realized that it was actually a UFO. Three tall white humanoids without faces got out of the vehicle and paralyzed the two men forcing them onto the ship, where they were subject to experimentation, and afterwards left to leave. The Rubberado is a cryptid, who resembles a porcupine, whose spines and flesh are extremely rubbery. It uses this ability to bounce across the land. Every time a Rubberado bounces, it laughs. Whenever the Rubberado's hit, it bounces too. And if anybody manages to eat the cryptid, they're forced to bounce around for the rest of their lives. 
The hold egg is a creature that's been primarily seen in Wisconsin and Minnesota. It's about the size of a rhinoceros, with horns and spines, and a maniacal disposition. It's very intelligent, but for whatever reason, the only thing that it will eat is a porcupine. The hodag is known to bury itself in a very thick layer of leaves in order to hibernate in the winter. The Weeping Black Angel is actually based on two separate things. First, it's based on the Black Angel statue, which is a memorial created in 1912 and located at the Oakland Cemetery in Council Bluffs, Iowa. According to legend, anyone who kisses the statue dies shortly thereafter. The second thing that's based on are the Weeping Angels from Doctor Who which is why its hands are covering its face. They're a race of predatory creatures, who are only able to attack when they're not being looked at, and when they do attack you, they send you to another time. The Crawfordsville monster is a creature that people in Crawfordsville, Indiana in 1891 saw. The creatures were very large and dreadful looking. They were about 18 feet long and 8 feet wide. They moved rapidly through the air by the means of several pairs of side fins, they look very similar to the rods that people claim to have taken photographs of, too. The Crawfordsville monster was a pure white with no definite shape or form. The most prominent sightings of the creature were by a Methodist pastor and his wife above their house. The creature floated around for a long time before leaving, eventually. Alright guys, so that's gonna be all the beasties that we'll discuss in this video. Hopefully you learned something new, or even have a new favorite now. You may have noticed that I didn't cover all of the beasties. That's because when they reveal the new beasties for the UFO expansion in about three weeks, I'm going to be making another video like this for those, and so all the beasties I didn't talk about in this video, I'll be discussing in the next one too. So if you're excited to learn about all the rest of the beasties, as well as the new ones in the UFO expansion, be sure to leave a like and subscribe, and also let me know what your favorite beasties are in the comments below. I'd have to say that out of all of them, for right now, my favorite's probably Squonk. Even though it's supposed to be ugly, I think it's pretty cute. So with all that said, I'll be seeing you soon in some more upcoming videos.